Hey guys, just finished breakfast. It's 6 p.m. <laughs> uh, welcome to Graveyard. <laughs> uh, cool thing about Graveyard is you can actually uh, take a little time to, if you plan it right, to have a very leisurely breakfast and a second cup of coffee. And uh, I would be doing a few projects if it wasn't so friggin' hot out there. <laughs> Man, it's brutal. It's like 90. <laughs> I mean that's pretty bad around the Seattle area. I'm I am much more comfortable in the snow and in the night than I am in uh, uh, than I'm in weather like this. But um, I've had some questions like uh, what what effect do I see uh, or what do I see how I see the dollar collapsing affecting other countries. Well, uh, my. Si my take on that is that um, is that um, uh, the the dollar is in <laughs> just as bad a shape as a lot of first world countries currency. It's like a race to the bottom. Uh, but what it really looks like is that um, cryptocurrencies are going to be replacing a lot of uh, dollar activity in the future. Uh, we've got um, I mean, it's just so, it's so easy and so quick, uh, and it's so free of government to just, to just uh, send money to, you could send it to anywhere. You could send money to China, you can send it pretty much anywhere, and uh, Overstock.com, you know, they, they're taking Bitcoins, they're starting to uh, uh, work on getting their own suppliers to accept Bitcoins. And then it's just, it's just this, uh, <laughs> it's, it's going to be pretty big. I'm pretty impressed with it. But um, then they're talking, and we're talking about like, uh, like how I see the job market coming and, you know, all of these, uh, these uh, like auto, automatically driving vehicles and, uh, and like uh, large trucks are, Supposedly, in about 2020, they're going to be driving themselves. You know, and I just recently saw a video on uh, the Google car that uh, that is self-driving. You know, it's just like you s sit down in it, just like an elevator, and give your destination, and off you go. Um, not that I plan on getting rid of my car <laughs> or my truck, um, but basically, those things are going to have a lot of potential and. As a heavy diesel truck mechanic, I will have to plan my uh, career accordingly uh, if uh, these automatic driving trucks come out. But I'm sort of a geek; I could I could handle that. But um, I, the thing I really wanted to cover is the job market in the future. Now, of course, manufacturing and everything and energy production are in decline <laughs> and and guys I mean the um, the nine to five job market you know uh, where people just go to work in the morning and hammer out a bunch of productivity in some assembly line and then go home at the end of the day traditional employment like that uh, is really on the decline uh, a lot of um, a lot of uh, uh, part-time work is is sort of taking its place, uh, and what I'm seeing uh, also, I mean, but maybe that's not a terribly bad thing because as it is, man, uh, if you look at your pay stub, uh, maybe a third of your pay or more is going to various taxes and. Social Security tax and FICA tax and and then man if you have another layer of tax like state income tax on top of that then you can just man a, a real big percentage of your check is being taken every day and when 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 you're getting so much of your check taken away having a just throttling back and having a less formal career and less formal job uh, might have some potential to it. <laughs> um, 
Now, what I'm seeing uh, in the cryptographic, crypto uh, uh, subculture, uh, I'm seeing innovation after innovation come up. And we're, I'm seeing things like uh, MadeSafe uh, and Ethereum, which are encrypted internets that people will be able to communicate on and uh, interact on and, and um, do business on. And that will, and it'll all be so totally encrypted that that um, government controls, like <laughs> for example, uh, Iceland, if they attempted to ban porn, <laughs> which is just an absolute joke, anybody with any computer ability at all can get porn if they want it. <laughs> but um, but basically, the Ethereum networks and made safes and you know, and even Tor and things like that that exist now, um, those things just pretty much just go right around such uh, such uh, such measures. Plus, you can get like like proxy servers, and you can you can sign on to a proxy, and then you could pop up anywhere in the world if you want, and then basically it looks to the internet like you are in Spain or wherever, right? So. Uh, yeah, yeah, good luck trying to. <laughs> the only way to really uh, curtail such activity is to just yank internet access completely. And Egypt tried that, and then they discovered they couldn't even, they were so dependent on, on the networks that they couldn't even pay their own troops. And all of the business interests that had... Uh, any business at all going, they, their business is ground to a halt without internet. Um, <laughs> my company, <laughs> I don't know how smart this is, they, oh man, in fact, in a way, it's pretty freaking dumb. Uh, they are incorporating the phone systems into the computer, right? The computers, the computer has to be, the computer network has to be up and running in order for the phone system to work. And man, if that wasn't bad enough, you know how people, sometimes we got problems with computers and man, they're putting all their eggs in one basket. As soon as, as soon as the computers fail, man, we might as well just pull out a checkerboard and start playing checkers or, send, or start sending everybody home because there nothing can be done. Uh, some people uh, have have backups like their cell phones and stuff. I mean, I have my I have an office in my cell phone pretty much, but um, a lot of people don't do that. <laughs> but anyway, back to what I was saying about the computer networks. Um, we are also coming up on another network uh, that is getting. It's in. Uh, I think it's like alpha stage right now, but it's going. It's called Open Bazaar. And it's like, you know how a bazaar is a uh, place like a flea market where, you, where business is done ad hoc and, uh, and it's, uh, well anyway, Open Bazaar will be a highly encrypted, it'll be a program that sits on your desktop and it will be so highly encrypted it's ridiculous and you'll be able, it'll be very similar to Craigslist, only there will be reputation scores on top of that, right? If you do business with somebody, they will be able to rate you as a business partner, right? If you, um, you'll be able to, uh, if you have like a, like something for sale, right? Or a car or whatever, you can uh, put that on uh, Open Bazaar and then people in your area or outside of your area, if they want to search very widely, um, they'll be able to see your car or your business and then show up and do uh, or contact you on the network and without even knowing who you are because neither party will need to know who the other party is. Um, that's the beauty of it. Um, and you'll and basically what we'll be able to do is if you, you see, see this hand right here, <laughs> We guys, we have just a tremendous amount of wealth 
I mean, we always think that uh, women have all this wealth between their legs, and in a way they do, but we have wealth right here in our hands and right up in our heads. And we can create value and create productivity, and and the beauty of this network, this uh, open bazaar, and possibly in Ethereum and MadeSafe as well, we're going to be able to get up in the morning and have our leisurely coffee. Uh, we might not even have a regular nine to five job, and we'll just punch up a global the the global search we have set up for various types of work and ads. Uh, somebody might need a car, uh, a battery put in their car, right? And they have a high paying job or something and they just don't want to mess with it. And they don't want to take it to a shop because shops have a tendency to be expensive. And man, most of, most of their money that goes through a shop is like tax. <laughs> um, property tax, B&O tax, I mean, income tax, and then they have to pay the tax on their employees and tax, and tax, tax, tax. And then it just drives the price up so high that it ends up destroying demand. And then people, they either struggle to try to do it themselves or uh, try to hire somebody to do it, but uh, if they had an alternative, they would choose that alternative. Now, uh, open Bazaar and networks like that, that looks like, man, it's just going to be a revolution. Because guys who are good at certain things, like uh, roof repair, plumbing, uh, painting, even yard work, or uh, especially if you're like a, a very fit teenager, you could, you could, <laughs> you could go doing some, do some yard work. And, uh, and the beauty of it is you'd be able to look at the ad and see the ratings that people who have done business with that person uh, have left on that person's identity. And then you'll see that they are either a four-star person or a five-star or a one-star. If they're like Ebenezer Scrooge and really nasty and unpleasant and, and uh, or if they don't follow through with their business, their side of the deal, people will give them nasty reviews. So the result is you'll be able to say, oh man, that guy had a really nasty review. So you can you can jack your price up <laughs> because fewer, fewer people will work for that person. And you can do things like demanding payment in advance and stuff like that. And um, also people will have the option of creating a new identity. So if, if somebody has a brand new slate, you know, it's, they, their rating won't be able to attract business as well. But anyway, um, so basically you, you can demand more money and you'll be able to, uh, you know, demand payment in advance and stuff like that. Cause they, they've either restart their identity because they have, <clears throat> they have something to hide or they are basically, uh, just starting out and they're going to have to get established in the network before trust is given to them. Uh, so anyway, uh, we are going to see a situation, you know, where we'll be able to just get up in the morning, scan the ads and say, okay, looks like at about 9 a.m., about uh, five miles over there, a guy needs uh, some tires put on his car, right? And another guy needs a... Uh, um, uh, oh geez, uh, a drippy faucet <laughs> replaced, right? And MIGTOs especially, you know, we'll be able to have the financial stability and, and adaptability to jump around and do all this stuff. And yes, in a way, we will be making less than a 9 to 5 job, probably, you know, but, uh, or maybe not. Uh, but we'll have the advantage of uh, being invisible to the graspy, uh, control freak, regulate, overly regulating, uh, uh, highly taxing, uh, grasping hands of government, right? We'll be able to just work and everything that we earn, we will keep. And we'll probably be paid in uh, cryptocurrencies of some kind possibly Bitcoin, possibly some kind of uh, 
some kind of uh, untraceable dark coin, which is like automatically mixed um, and almost impossible to trace. And when that happens, MIGTO will have the ability to go, man, completely off grid. <laughs> we'll be able to uh, earn money and do business and uh, buy and sell and uh, do pretty much anything we do now, only we will be invisible to government. And that has just an enormous potential to do a couple of different things, right? It can enrich us and allow us to uh, to live comfortably and with some degree of prosperity, and we can also finally put some kind of limits on the uh, crazy federal government war machine uh, criminal freaking empire uh, that we've got going right now. That's why uh, I think that we, with these new systems coming up, we are right now in, if you look around and see how just ever-present that the feds and the, all these levels of government just have oh, the control that they have over people's lives, it's just, it's just huge. Uh, but with these gray economies, these new, e since they've destroyed the regular economy, right? <laughs> It's not shouldn't be a surprise to them if we start making a new economy for our own purposes, right? They've just wrecked what we had before. Now we're going to have to replace it with something, and um, and it's just a matter of time until these systems get up and running. It's uh, I think uh, I think um, um, Open Bazaar is an alpha. It'll go into uh, it'll go into like. Uh, short like the beginning distribution in a, I think August if I if I remember right um, but man <laughs> it, it could just be revolutionary um, do you remember that uh, TV show route 66 um, I don't remember it personally because I I'm cut, not really old enough to have watched it in first run and it wasn't really my kind of show when I was a kid <laughs> but uh, it was all about these two guys who had this car and they drove up and down Route 66 in uh, here in the US and whenever they'd run low on money they'd get a job, a short-term job somewhere and earn some money for a few days and tank up their tank and get groceries and uh, begin driving down Route 66 again. Well, that's a pretty good chance that when the this gray economy comes and gets established with reputation scores and all that, um, people will be able to actually become sort of nomadic um, if they choose and and do things like uh, drive down to Florida in the winter and do work down there and then uh, zip up north when it gets too brutally, insanely hot <laughs> uh, and, um, and start earning money in a cooler environment. So it's going to be, I mean, it it really looks promising so uh, if you're interested in this sort of thing just keep an ear open for for if made uh, made safe ethereum and uh, and the uh, these new uh, networks like the open bazaar <laughs> and you you can believe that as soon as I get a copy of that open bazaar on my computer and test it out I will I will definitely be sharing that <laughs> and uh, telling people how to use it and stuff like that and then and then within a year uh, as a mechanic I could be picking up side work I could I could get off work at, in the afternoon and uh, fire up the smartphone and punch up the local ads for various things and if it's a if it's a job especially if it's like an owner operator of a heavy diesel truck that I'm familiar with <laughs> I'll be able to do things like uh, say, sure, I can change a starter on that, but hey, I could probably troubleshoot it for you, and maybe it's not a starter. Maybe it's only a relay. <laughs> and then uh, then I could pick up a little bit of side income, totally off the grid, <laughs> uh, and 
technically that might be tax evasion, but uh, that doesn't necessarily mean I don't have to claim the income and uh, and um, and basically pay the taxes on it, which I pretty much plan to do while I can. Uh, the time may come when I won't be able to afford it, but uh, but for the time being, you know, even my bitcoins, you know, when I when they <laughs> the next leg up uh, probably at the end of the year sometime uh, I will probably have a significant growth and if I spend any of that I will definitely claim it as income um, so mostly because I can afford to but if if I somehow lost my job or something and I became like uh, seriously short <laughs> that's a pretty good bet that I might not <laughs> do that so well it's everybody has to pay sort of decide how you're going to run your life, you know. Uh, <laughs> so uh, some people though, a lot of people, will actually basically just completely disappear according to, uh, to the government, you know, and uh, the only time the government will even hear from this person is when he files the, uh, the taxes, uh, his federal income taxes, and reports like only a tiny amount of income and then ends up getting a little bit of government assistance as long as the government's able to do that uh, <laughs> on his taxes. But a lot of his money will be actually earned totally invisibly to uh, the feds. Now, of course, with energy depletion and, uh, and the nasty, uh, you know, how oil is getting more expensive and then, of course, uh, Natural gas is more expensive, and now, of course, everybody, most people know that uh, natural gas is uh, the source of pretty much all our commercial fer fertilizer in the U.S. And uh, then, of course, oil, all the insecticides are made of oil, and the products from those fields are just so freaking toxic anyway. Um, people are starting to localize and produce some of their own food. and. When that happens, it's going to open up an entire, uh, an entire new market for labor and expert labor. Uh, for example, permaculture designers, people who can create gardens that practically take care of themselves, like the ones I've got out there. Um, they'll be able to set up these gardens, uh, and that will be work, useful work, and people will pay for that. <laughs> so, um, so basically, that's the future I see. Um, we're, everything's going to become a lot more local. It's going to be higher, high tech, and it's. Uh, but it'll also be lower tech. If you want to consider permaculture low tech, but it's really not. It's uh, it's a, it's sort of high tech natural productivity because <laughs> the way you have to design it. I mean, you spend you spend more time working out these designs generally if you're like a newbie like me uh, then you spend actually producing and caring for the garden <laughs> it's like planning and design is like critical so okay well um, that's what I see coming look for uh, look for made safe ethereum and open bazaar because those things are going to change everything and it's a really exciting thing uh to be uh into this uh this alternative economy <laughs> um, because it's just going to bring so much power back to individual people like us uh and it's that's why i think that you know, everybody hears about peak oil and peak natural gas, peak phosphorus. And, well, I believe right now we are at peak government. Uh, and soon, as its revenues and the fact that people will be using their dollars or their marks or their yen or their yuan or their uh, euros, they'll be using such government money less, and that will make that money less valuable. and they won't be able, so basically it'll give every, all these government employees a pay cut and eventually they also will start branching out and, uh, and working in the 
gray economy as well. So it's going to be real interesting to watch. And I've got about I've got about 10 years before I become an actual old man. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to participating in these economies and and in this technology and uh, and it is just very exciting. <laughs> I would highly recommend uh, keeping an eye on those things, especially Open Bazaar. That that could really change everything. Okay, well, uh, I'll see you around. <laughs>